<laughs> Amazing, thank you. Um, I was thinking about this, and I can imagine that everybody can think of the next verse, which goes something like, and now you're back for my coffee break. I just walked in to find you here with the sad look upon your face. Okay, maybe that was not the right one to continue that. Um, but I'm going to, hopefully, this is um, a good site, like a good site. Um, I'm just gonna show some example text. Can you see that all right? If not, I can make it bigger. Can you, can someone please, bigger? More, more? Good, perfect. Um, awesome, so my name is Ju, I'm an engineer at Norad Inc. Um, I was born in China, grew up in Italy, now I live in Britain. Um, you can find me online as Arkham with a four. Cool, so today I want to write a program that's able to parse a guitar chord sheet, like that one, and my goal is to write a program that's actually able to understand what a guitar chord is, right? So my final goal is to have a program that reads that AM7, understands that it's a A minor seventh chord, and then is able somehow to show me, for example, how to play that on a guitar. And the first step is to actually, given this blob of text, being to extract what a chord is, right? So what we're going to do today is to show how we can do that using a regular expression, and then quickly thereafter showing how you can do that with Elm Parser. And by the end of the talk, I think I will convince you that Elm Parser is a much better solution, and hopefully you'll just you know go out and parse. Um, so, okay, now this is the easy part of the talk. Just type some code. Vim main Elm. Um, I have an empty file. Um, I can, you know, I know you don't trust me already, so I'm just going to uh, use some snippets. Um, I think you know Harry Potter, right? Acho Elm. Perfect. <laughs> um, a colleague of mine told me a really great joke. So by the end of this talk, no matter which house you're from, you should be able to speak parser tongue. Um, I've hooked up Elm Live with this, so if I type Hey Oslo, we should be able to see it on the right. Perfect. Is that proper Norwegian? Thank you. Perfect. Google, my best friend. Um, and I'm just going to continue this sort of thing, so I'm just going to do Acho Sheet. And here we have another sound. Don't bother reading the lyrics, you'll see them like bigger later. Um, but now I just want to do something quite simple. I create a let expression. I'm going to convert this sheet into lines just by using string lines. Um, sheet, cool. And now I want to do something with this, so I'm just going to map. I'm going to map the lines into each single line. I'm create a div, create a span, and I'm going to put a line inside it. And I'm also going to give it a class which is uh, line. Okay? Perfect. Now you can read the text. Um, I'm gonna drink some water. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That was, I'm gonna fix this. Don't worry about the water on the laptop. <laughs> cool. Um, all righty. As I said, let's try to break the text using a regular expression. Um, I wouldn't want to inflict that sort of pain even to my worst enemy, so I'm not going to type it live. Acho regex. Um, and this is a simple regular expression. Like when you're writing regular expressions in Elm, you have to import this package, which I will do. It's called regex. Um, and after you do that, you have this regex from string, and this returns a maybe, and you can pass a regex that doesn't match anything. In our case, we want to match a literal open square bracket, and then a character set, A, B, C, D, E, F, G an optional lowercase m to tell if the chord is a minor chord, or we just want anything which is not an open square bracket zero times or more. And actually, this regular expression is already bugged because I just realized it should be one time or more, but never mind that. Uh, and I think that we all know regular expressions because they're quite you know, pervasive in programming. Um, 
But I want to show something. So if I use these regex, right, um, I'll just quickly replace uh, this. Oh, there was a bit too much replacing, I'm afraid. Uh, CI, mm, CI, no? Cool, perfect. Thank you, Vim. Um, regex, find. I can pass this regex. I can pass it to a line. And then I can just call a function called view regex. Uh, I'm going to acho it. Acho view. I think I have to be, you know, it's like Vingardium Leviosa. If you don't see it right, it doesn't work. <laughs> acho view regex, something like that. Um, you get the list of matches, and you extract. This is a record, and inside has like various fields, but we just care about the actual part of the text that matches. And for each one of the matches, I'm going to create a span with the class token, and the text is the element, right? If I save this, um, we'll see that there's like a little border now, right? And this tells us that the regex was great. I'm serious. So. It did its job like perfectly, right? Um, but the problem is that we don't really know what is the first chord. The only thing that the regex did was to cut off a chunk of that text and tell us, hey, I'm pretty sure there's a chord in there. But first of all, right now with this regex, we don't even know what is a chord and what are lyrics. Like we're just matching one of the other. And then when we get this thing, we will have to do some more additional computation to understand that that's a A minor chord, right? But, you know, we're programmers, we're lazy, we don't want to do the same thing twice, right? So why should we use regular expressions? And uh, I've done very extensive research on GitHub on existing JavaScript libraries that do this. They all have this huge regular expression followed by usually these hundred lines of handcrafted code where the developer checks the first character of the string, tries to do index manipulation to understand if it's a minor, if it's a seventh, if it's an augmented chord, and so on and so forth. And I thought, well, there must be a solution out there which you know, is better. Um, surprise, there is. Um, so I'm going to import this library. It's called parser. So you can just import this uh, with uh, Elm parser. Import parser sp because I like just keeping modules qualified. And, but I'll expose everything, because this is a live coding talk. Um, and the first problem is that I want to write a core parser, right? And this parser is a tagged type. So the first thing we have to do is to um, find a good answer to, well, what are we parsing? And we realize we have no such type. So I'm just going to do some wishful programming and say we will have a chord at some point, right? Well, th luckily we're in Elm, so I can just do type chord. And what is a chord? Something with a note and something that helps me to understand if it's a major or minor in this case, right? So I'm going to do chord, note, uh, quality. And uh, quality is easy enough. It's just going to be major. Whoa. No, again. Thank you. Uh, minor, cool. And the notes, if we are following like Western tradition, is going to be one of the letters between A and G. So I don't want to type that. I'm just going to actual them. I hope this becomes a verb like by the end of this. <laughs> I'm going to quickly actual this from GitHub. Um, <laughs> so what is a core parser? Um, I'm going to use uh, the simplest parser possible. Uh, this is a very smart parser. It just understands that uh, A minor is the best chord ever invented by humankind. So it's always going to return A minor, no matter what's the content that you pass. And I'm just going to simplify the problem a little bit. And instead of saying you have to parse you know, the lyrics with the chords, I'm just going to say, uh, well, just parse you know, this subset of chords. I know these are chords. Um, Cool. So now I'm going to show how to use this parser. I'm just going to do p run. I'm going to pass the parser, chord parser, and I'm going to pass the line. And this thing returns a result, which is, um, if you don't know what it is, it's very similar to uh, maybe. So it has like a good case and um, error case. The good case is called OK. So I'm just going to do OK chord. And when it's a chord, I'm going to make a span, and the text is going to be uh, I'm just going to debug string uh, this thing because I don't want to write the conversion function for now. Um, or if we have an 
error, 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 and it's quite hard to pronounce, I think, um, is going to be a span with dbg um, r. Okay? Beautiful. All A minors. Um, a minor is my favorite chord, by the way, so, yeah. Okay, let's make it like a proper parser. So we can see that here we have a chord, something about the note, and something about the quality, right? Um, so I think it would be nice to have something like a parser that understands the note and a parser that understands the quality. So I'm going to use this special operator, which I call the human funnel, right? You're just like this. It's like pipe equals like human funnel sort of operator. And you pass note parser. And then you do something very similar. You do a quality parser. And the specialty of these human funnel things is that they will match, and then they will apply the value that they match uh, up. So it, it's really convenient that our chord data constructor has exactly that sort of shape. It's a function that takes two arguments and creates a chord, right? Which means I can basically remove um, the parentheses and just make it something like this. Um, and this will be right, but we don't really know what's inside. It's like I'm always doing this sort of wishful programming. I try to program with things that I don't have yet, which I think maybe applies with my life as well. Um, node parser. And a node parser is a parser that's able to understand a lot of different nodes. So if you're familiar with the JSON library, this is quite familiar to you. Otherwise, it just says one-off and does exactly what's uh, no, it's written in the box. So I'm going to succeed here, A, when I'm able to match a symbol which is, oh no, a symbol which is called, oh, okay, cool. And this is another weird operator, and I call it um, posh British aristocrat from the 18th century. And just think about like this person has um, a watch pocket, and just like grabs stuff and puts it like in his watch pocket. Um. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Note, another note that we have to parse is F. And another note that we have to parse is G. And another note that we have to parse is um, C, okay? And basically we're done. Um, next, um, quality parser, right? Ugh. Quality parser, perfect. Same thing, right? We either want to throw this, the, this result into one of these two buckets, either um, major or minor. So I'm going to say P one off again, and I'm going to say it's either um, a P succeed of minor, and this only succeeds when we um, posh um, watch pocket the um, <laughs> symbol lowercase m, or we want to succeed for a major chord when we don't match anything, right? Like, if we just say, see, um, you know, like uppercase A, that's an A major. So in this case, I'm just going to do like the simplest thing, which is just return major when you can't, you know, like it just, that's it. And the one off will try the first thing, we'll try to things to match, and then we'll try the next one, and so on and so forth. This doesn't really behave like a JSON parser, so you have to be careful about that and read about what it means to be a backtrackable parser and things like that. But I don't want to, you know, scare you too much. So let's just save this. Um, you can see on the right-hand side, um, now we have a program which understands how the chords are written and really understands what they are, right? So now we have like these really beautiful Elm types which describe what the chord is and we can use them and we can be, you know, very naughty at using them. Um, okay, so I think this was pretty cool. Um, I'm going to, yes, I have five more minutes. I'm going to actually do the real thing, right? I cheated a little bit, but I mean, you'll forgive me, I think. Um, I'm going to decomment this thing. So we're actually going to parse the whole sheet and I'm going to write a line parser. And this parser will be able to parse a line. And as before, the first question is, what do we want? And it's a very hard question to answer. Uh, I'm going to call it token, and I'm going to assume that our, um, our parser will return this list ooh, of blue screens and 
uh, either lyrics, chords, lyrics, chord, lyrics, right? Um, of course, uh, I don't have that yet, but no worries. Um, type token, um, da, da, da. it's either lyrics uh -uh, with a string. Okay, my hands are abandoning me, so God help me. Parsed chord. Awesome. Um, line parser. I have this type. I quite like it. So what should we do? We should just write something like we did before. It's going to be one of two things. So it's going to be either um, a, succeed, da, 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 a succeed of parsed. And this should happen when we match a symbol, which is uh, open square bracket. I'm going to put the uh, close one as well. And in the middle, uh, I really want a human funnel operator, right? Because I want to grab this um, chord. And I can just use it. Like, this is the beautiful thing about parsers. It's like, imagine reusing a bit of a regular expression that you've written. Good luck with that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that came out a bit aggressive, I think. <laughs> um, but. So that's one case, and we're done. So that's the part that understands like what the chord is in this representation, because maybe in another chord sheet, the chords are separated by um, parentheses. I don't know. I don't care. I'm just going to do it like now for, um, for this talk. And for the lyrics, we just basically want to say, keep eating stuff from the input until you find something that could be the beginning of a chord, right? Um, but in reality, you see that symbol matches and you know it consumes the input so really what we want is something that is able to look a bit in the further in the future right it should be a, a program that arrives to that space after the was and just says oh the next thing after is an open square bracket so probably i want to stop now right so we want something that's able to peak in the future and um, the parser library exposes this concept using this terminology which is called chomp which i think is pretty tasty. Um, and this takes a function which takes a character. You can see before we had strings, this thing takes characters. And this is because it's doing this sort of like, you know, look ahead operation. The unfortunate thing about chomp while is that it will also match if you can't chomp anything, which is not very useful, isn't it? Um, but the reason why it's done this way is, is so it can match, for example, zero or infinite spaces. Right? And that's something that you can think can be useful sometimes. But in my case, I want to chomp at least one character. So I'm going to do that using chomp if. And chomp if behaves in the same, behaves in the same way. Uh, but in this case, I don't really care what's inside. I just want to grab something. Right? Um, and I would expect in this case that I'm going to use the human funnel operator on both of these things. But I actually want these two things all together. So instead of doing that, I'm going to use the posh um, watch, it, watch packet. Yes, thank you. Um, operator. And I'm going to use another function, which is called p get chomped string um, to grab what's inside. It's going to be uh -uh, p succeed. And in this case, I'm just going to say uh, identity because. I don't really want to apply any type. And here I'm going to do the human funnel thing. OK? And if I save this, ta -da, it compiles, sort of, but there's an error. What's the error? Um, something's off with the body of line parser. And if I go down, it says, the one-off produces parser token, but you want a, list of, a parser of list token. I hate to admit it, but the computer is right. <laughs> You know, I think this is something that we, as Elm developers, we have to repeat many times every day. Um, but the computer is right, and I'm going to, you know, accept the suggestion. Thank you, computer. And I'm going to write another function, which succeeds an identity. Because now I've realized that I really want to keep looping and either throwing, like, you know, these things into one of the other bucket. And luckily, Evan has thought of everything, so there is a ploop function. And it takes two arguments. The first one is the initial state of the accumulator, and the second one is a helper function. So this helper function, um, I won't write the type of it because it's quite long and confusing. Uh, suffice to know that it's a function that takes the accumulator as its first argument. 
Um, and the only difference is that instead of emitting these parsed things, it emits special uh, values which are done or loop. So loop means keep looping, done means we're done looping. So they're pretty uh, intuitive. So I'm just going to quickly wrap up. So it's going to take this uh, non-anonymous function, we're going to return a uh, loop, and we're going to make this a V, and we're going to put it in front of the accumulator, right? Well, that's my vimfu going a bit far away. Um, same thing here, loop, lyrics, I hope that Elm format will fix it for me. I'm just typing garbage in. Um, MP succeed, and here we say done, boop, 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 boop. and we're going to reverse the accumulator. Uh-oh, you can say, like, th this thing is crashing, right? What is the problem? It's expecting AFGC, and this is the actual output of the parser, and it's because down here, I st I'm still running the previous core parser, but you can see how great the error message is. It's telling me that, Look, I've tried to, these symbols, they should hold me, should be there, but I couldn't find anything. But it was like a very helpful, right? So if instead of doing that, I just run the line parser, and instead of calling like this, I'm just going to pipe it with the view uh, result function. It's going to look something like this. Acho view result. Result, perfect. Um, and you can see that on the right, we have pretty much the same program that we had using uh, regular expressions, right? But now the Elm program knows everything, which means that now that the Elm program means everything, it's very little work to go from there to something like this. And first of all, it's nicer, and it looks, okay, that was a bit dumb, right? But no, because now we know what an A minor is, we can write what a note is, like what a chord is, which is composed of some notes. We know what a guitar is, so we can write an Elm fretboard, like a fretboard, a guitar fretboard in Elm, and we can write an algorithm to automatically generate voicings of that chord on your guitar. So now when I hover on this, this is exactly what this does. It goes like onto all these different chords and computes live these shapes. Uh, with the idea of what a guitar is. And you'll see, for example, C slash B. This is just another case in the parser. I don't have more time, so I'm just going to quickly uh, show this. Um, this is the repo where I've posted most of the chord and the parsers and everything uh, that's there. It's very alpha just because I want to stabilize the API before you know, making it official. So really, you can pull it from Elm packages, but I haven't exposed any of the inner modules, so you literally can't use them like in a real project. You can look at it, that's what you can do with it. Um, and I just want to say if you, you know, you're interested in working more with Elm, if you want to do it, you know, remotely from Europe, there's like a bunch of us from the Red Inc., so just, you know, come and chat with us. And that's all, thank you.